that's nice. That's pretty smooth. Hello! As ye old Valentine's Day approaches, thought we would do something a little bit different this week. Not different in the sense of kind of the format of this, we're still going to be making a dress like I tend to do, but different in the sort of style of dress. I wanted to do something a little bit more vintagey and a little bit more 1950s, which it's been a minute since I ventured into sort of 40s and 50s fashion. In fact, it's been at least seven. Honestly, nowadays, my preference is to dress like an NPC that lives like in the middle of a forest and gives you a random quest to find some mushrooms and then you never see her ever again. But if you've been here for a while on this channel, you know I used to do a lot of 40s and 50s stuff, so we're taking a journey into the past. Like I said, Valentine's Day is coming up. I've never been a huge fan of Valentine's Day. Years ago, whilst scrolling Pinterest probably, I was accosted by this image. And to this day, the absolute death grip it has over my brain. It is finally time for me to take a stab at this and try to recreate it. I do have a few modifications I'm gonna make to make it a little bit more me. This is more of a play suit. Whenever I wear a romper, it looks like I'm Tommy Pickles. In an effort to not look like I'm wearing a diaper, we're gonna do a couple changes. But alas, my friends, before we do that, this video is sponsored. And so to talk a little bit about that and to show you a couple outfits, here is sponsor Rachel. Hello. So today's video is sponsored by ThreadUp. I absolutely love ThreadUp, you probably know this. And I thought it would be fun to put together a couple different outfits, almost entirely from ThreadUp. There's just so many options on there. If you have not heard me talk about them before, ThreadUp is an online thrifting marketplace. You can either go on the app or the website, thousands of items from your favorite brands for up to 90% off of estimated retail. Everything on there is secondhand. If you're looking for a specific brand, you can type it in the search bar and things will pop up. If you're looking for Target or Free People or Anthropology, brands that either, you know, maybe are too expensive off the rack or you wanna be a little bit more sustainable and shop secondhand. If I'm looking for something, I will probably select the color as a tan or brown or green. <laughs> you can filter by size, you can filter by cut, style, length, pattern, material. I have been sort of playing around with mod, late 60s kind of fashion. So let me show you what I got. Okay, first up, I grabbed this American Eagle dress for $13.99, even though it was estimated at $53. Paired with this anthropology sweater that was estimated at $105, but thread up had it for $37.99. Then this Topshop top and Tommy Hilfiger dress. Dress estimated at $139, got it for $35.99. And the top valued at $77, but got it for $26.99. They're doing this new thing where you can click the link in my description and it'll bring you to the items that I bought and allow you to shop similar items. So yes, that is ThreadUp. Once again, I highly recommend them. If you would like to see what I got and see similar items, you can click the link in my description and use the code Rachel Ding! for 35% off of your first order. Thank you so much Thredup for sponsoring this video. And without further ado, let's get back to making this uncharacteristically colorful dress. So let's talk changes. So this place suit was part of a fashion show in the 1950s that I sort of remember the name of. <laughs> Teddy Tinling Fashions. According to Wikipedia, Ahem. <clears throat> Cuthbert Collingwood Ted Tinling, sometimes known as Teddy Tinling, was a fashion designer, spy, and author. Which, color me intrigued. This fashion show focused on bathing suits and uh, beach wear. I don't think aged <laughs> super well. This heart dress is a bit more harmless. So doing a little sleuthing, I did find the fashion show and it's a hoot. In his latest fashion styles with a South Pacific theme, these two outfits give us food for thought with a tasty flavor. Taking a leaf out of the tobacco planter's book is this outfit called Tobacco Flower. From seas blown by the trade winds comes the surfer's paradise. Warning note to bachelors, watch out for this outfit called Leap Year. Finally, the Man Friday outfit, complete with elaborate hat, smock, and waterproof white velveteen pants. 
what Robinson Crusoe would have said about it, and where those footprints lead to, we just don't know. Recreations are some of my favorite things to do, and I did some digging in my pattern stash to figure out what I could sort of channel my inner Victor Frankenstein and create something that looks relatively similar to this, while also adding a little bit of panache. Niche. The top, I'm probably going to keep almost exactly the same if I can. Bottom, I think I'm going to make into a little bit more of a short skirt, so it's a little bit more like a play suit. And then I would also like to make a detachable circle skirt so that I can wear this as just a normal dress. I could not decide between these two designs, so I left it up to my Patreon fellowship and the repeated heart pattern one, so that's what we're going to do. To do that, I have a couple different patterns. This one, from the 50s, or... 40s, maybe? I don't know. Oh, 1953. I think I've used this before. Don't remember what video. <laughs> I remember not particularly liking the bottom of it um, because it is quite diaper-esque. <laughs> Getting a little bit creative here. This one is from the 70s, I'm guessing. So I was thinking this little wrap skirt, I can just make into a normal skirt. Attach it to the top of this. <laughs> <laughs> So that would be the base for the circle skirt. I'm just gonna make a, a circle skirt. I don't need a pattern for that. Let's talk materials. Okay, for this dress, I was thinking I needed a fabric that would be sort of stiffer. I chose a satin white taffeta kind of fabric because I also feel like taffeta is a very 50s fabric. Not exactly comfortable, but I'll get over it. <laughs> and then I grabbed all of the red felt sheets that the fabric store had just to have it and make sure that I had enough. And then I grabbed some red fabric markers. First thing I need to do, much like all of my sewing projects, is to start busting open the pattern, laying out the fabric, and just start putting things together and hoping that I didn't need to do a mock-up so that online mock-up enthusiasts don't need to know they were right. <laughs> Shh. As a complete unrelated side note, I got a bunch of conversation hearts for this video specifically. Let me tell you right now. I don't know why people don't enjoy them. I love eating sidewalk chalk. You may think, oh no, conversation hearts are too old school. Got some good ones. DM me. This one that says either goals or go gorals. Bay. Personally for me, I like the simple ones. Uh, my favorite out of this bunch is nice. I can imagine just handing that to someone and watching them intently as they read it. Nice. Basically, I will not be eating any more of these. They taste like elementary school rejection. Sidebar side, let's bust into this pattern. <laughs> initially calls for a collar that sort of folds down, but I don't need to do that, so I just tucked it away and pretended that it didn't exist. Which coincidentally is how I solve pretty much any problem in my life. Okay, so I have everything laid out for the top bodice part. These are basically the two major pieces and then the facing. And then there's some channels here for boning, which I think I am going to do. A lot of 50s garments were very structured and I, I kind of like how that feels and looks. So I'm going to try to do that. So I just have to cut these out real quick. All right, nice. Do the same thing for the other pattern, just so I have everything all cut and ready to be marked off and do all the darts and all that stuff. Let's do that. Putting everything together. Ah, which I'm not gonna lie to you is one of my least favorite parts about sewing, especially when they have uh, all these darts. So it's gonna take me a little time to mark off all these darts and do all that and then sew those before I can sew all the pieces together. Doing all the hard work now so we can do all the fun stuff later. Let's go. Donning my best I love sewing darts so much face, which is made even more delicious by my sewing machine being a little punk ass bitch. I have 
most annoying noise in the world. So, <laughs> so this again is just the base and then there will be a circle skirt detachable that you can put on and off. I still have to figure out the heart situation and how I'm gonna do that. I think I will probably end up cutting that out of fabric, just sewing it directly on top. It's starting to get dark, so I think that's it for today. Today was full of really boring stuff, but I think tomorrow we can have a lot of fun. Good morning. Day two, baby. As you saw, literally probably 15 seconds ago, we are making some progress. But what I need to do today before we do anything, attach the skirt, probably put the facing on, start working on the heart. And then before I attach that, I also have to do the red little frillies too. I probably should have just gotten ribbon trim, which is something that I'm just realizing at this exact moment. Oh well. Because I have a tendency to put things off, let's just do the rest of the boring stuff. I am a true believer in celebrating lives. Small achievements. I was able to find this kind of boning that already has fabric already sewn on. Totally forgot that I had. Initially looking for plastic zip ties and I could not find them anywhere in the basement. If you have seen the state of my basement, finding this was akin to Nicolas Cage's journey throughout National Treasure 1 and 2. That necessitates a hearty huzzah. So if you'll join me, three, two, one, huzzah! Now I just need to determine where on this it wants me to put the boning. Fold this over and just... Beautiful underlay. Because of that collar thing that I talked about earlier, the facing was a little bit longer, so I just had to sew it and then cut off the excess. The easiest way for me to figure this out is making a pattern piece myself. Milady. Looks like it takes up whole bust and then down here. I am going to grab some brown craft paper, try to make half of the heart and then obviously duplicate that so it's symmetrical. I'm trying to get better at that kind of stuff. So I'm not saying you should praise me, but I can't completely tame the chaos, but um, I can at least make things a little easier for myself. Now, where did I put that paper? Mm, upstairs? Me thinks. Now I have half a pattern piece. Cut some white fabric on a fold with this. I'm gonna do two layers. Join them right sides together, turn inside out, and then iron completely flat. time. To figure out the trim, I've gone ahead and done a test strip here. Huh? Not bad. I folded this over so it would be twice as long and then I made a very chintzy little scallop pattern here, marking off how long each bump is, and then drawing the loops. I could probably make this more precise, but 
so I don't really care. Makes it look more like a little handmade Valentine. Isn't that what Valentine's Day is all about, friends? Waiting to see if you got a Valentine from your sixth grade crush on the little Valentine box or pouch that they made you put on the back of your chair. People go around with their Valentines. I don't remember. Could you be petty and not put one in someone's box? I remember being disappointed, so maybe they did. I'm pretty sure my Valentines were always like Spider-Man or something, so. There's always something super generic and not necessarily romantic either. Have a web slinging Valentine's Day. I'm stuck on you, Valentine. You make me tingle. Pizza time. Uh, yep, so I'm just kinda doing this for the rest of my life. Ha! <laughs> Wish me luck. Okay, we are getting there. I'm gonna hand stitch the heart on here just because I feel like I will have a little bit more control. I have a sneaking suspicion that the reference dress might have just had the heart shape as a part of the dress and then put the trim around it to make it look like it was a separate piece. I don't know how else they would make it so there's not like weird warbling. I think is probably gonna happen here because the bust is obviously a more curvy area and there's no darts in this or anything. So I don't know, we'll see. So speaking of that um, sixth grade crush that I had, I thought I would give you a little insight into me as a person. When I love something, I love it hard, which is a little bit more acceptable when you're an adult and you know, you're in a marriage. But when you're 12, you, um, you get weird. And so specifically, ow! I have <laughs> worked myself so many times in this project. I guess you could say it's my bloody Valentine. I was quote unquote in love, i.e. obsessed with this boy in my grade. His name was Sean because of course it was. So one day I sketched out a little note that said, I heart you, but each letter was made out of smaller letters and those smaller letters spelled his name. And so this poor unsuspecting fellow at the lunch table opened this letter up from me. I can't remember if I had a friend delivered it or not. It might've been me, honestly. Opened it up, said, I heart you. But then upon closer inspection, realized that it also said, I heart Sean about a hundred times. <laughs> Needless to say, my friends, I was absolutely flabbergasted when he put it right in the trash. Don't know why. <laughs> Just call me Casanova. Anyways, I don't tell that story often, but I feel like, you know, we're friends. I can tell you about my 12 year old psychotic tendencies. Well, anyways, I'm gonna get to work. Hand sewing this, <laughs> and I'll check back later. Okay. It is attached, but well, I didn't really think about this. The fact that attaching this on top would kind of flatten out all of the dart work that I did. Inside, you know, there's room to put the bubbies and such and have those curves, but I kind of flattened it out. So basically, I mean, it's not horrible. You know, it just kind of flattens everything out. It kind of lost its shape a little. I don't know. I still think it's cute and I'll still definitely wear it, but that's just something to think about, I guess. And so now the fun part can begin. Take my fabric markers and start drawing on some hearts. I'm freaking excited about it. While that's drying, we can do the circle skirt. We are making progress, friends. <laughs> Let's freaking do it. I looked at him across the fence and said in a Let's do some math. All right, time to make the circle skirt. Okay, so there is a formula for this that I almost always forget. Okay, so my waist radius, four and a quarter 
inches. Fabric length required, 58 and a half inches. I have a feeling this is not 60 inches, which would be a huge pain in my ass. Tis? Yeah! Big, big brain. Oh, okay. Fold the fabric four times. This is once, twice, wait. <laughs> <laughs> correct? This is correct. But this seems very short. I swear, my brain works great in some situations. But this just breaks it for whatever reason. Okay, wait, how long do we want this to be, first of all? 26 inches? Yes, good, okay. No, hold it. <laughs> uh. Yeah, that's right, okay. Fold. Take this, pin it down, and make that by swinging this baby. I want it to be 26, 26 minus 4.25, which really does not seem right. No, 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 plus, hi, I'm so smart. This is gonna have to be just slightly shorter than I would like. One thing I'm learning about taffeta is that it is a freaking dog hair magnet. Heck! Ta-da! Now I need to make the waistband for this. Let's go! Painting on these little hearts, heart by heart, by heart, by heart, by heart. I also cut out a bunch more of that trim and decided to put it on both bottoms of the skirts. And while I was at that, I decided, you know what? I want to make a cute little Valentine's Day prop, much like a six-year-old would enjoy doing. But unlike a six-year-old, I have access to tools and about one-sixth the amount of patience. That's nice. I also decided to fix the bust on the dress, so here's me looking like I'm about to lure unsuspecting deep sea creatures to their deaths. And with that witty nautical analogy, the dress is ready. So let's do a little wrap up. What I like, what I didn't like. I'll start with what I like. I'm gonna be easier on myself this year. It looks like real clothes, which is pretty cool. I tried to put a little bit more care into making it look a little bit neater, making sure all the seams and the hems were all the same, which sounds like common sense, but when you are this amount of chaos packed into one body, it's a different story. <laughs> Especially on stuff that I plan to wear again, I think overall, I will definitely wear this again. Admittedly, I don't wear as much vintage -y, retro pinup -y stuff anymore, but I really do like this as a play suit, and I think it would be really, really cute for a beach day or strolling about a new city or something. I don't know. I feel a little bit weird about my legs in it, but that's kind of just a personal thing. I literally have two poles for legs. I tend not to wear things that show too much legs. But you know what? F that. 
I'ma show my gams, even if this string means. I am really, really glad that I went in and I restitched this because there's quite a difference between where I had it before. Before it came out to over here and then I moved it over. So this really was pulling back that far and I'm really, really glad I did that. So basically I put it on and then I pinned where I thought that it would go. The overskirt is fine. I'm not super obsessed with it or anything, but if I feel like I wanna cover my legs a little bit more, it'd be nice to have that option. I do like a good circle skirt. It's nice and swooshy. The opening is a little weird because I didn't really think about the fact that when you cut a circle skirt, it's gonna overlap and do sort of like a triangular thing. Plus there's like a little gap up by the belt. Just looks a little weird. So there are many things I could have done to fix that, but I chose not to. And now I'm living with the consequences. I do like kind of when it flaps open and you get a little glimpse of what's underneath. You know what I'm saying? On paper and in this wrap up, it's, it's kind of a simple dress, but there was a lot of different parts to it, including all the trim and all the figuring out of things. So I hope you had fun. A fun little journey back into the 50s, which I don't normally do. Dressing like a quest giving NPC one day. A little gal posing for a pinup illustration the next day. You can do it. Thanks for being here. Uh, as a reminder, my schedule is now pretty much every other week unless I uh, decide to sprinkle in a couple extras in there. My Patreon is now live. It's in the description. If you wanna check that out, it's $5 a month. I'm trying to make it a nice, fun, cozy space. So <laughs> once again, thank you so much ThreadUp for sponsoring this video. If you guys wanna check out what I got and shop similar items, you can head to the link in my description and use the code Rachel. Ding ding for 35% off of your first order. And with that, I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload on Fridays and we have fun here. <clears throat> and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you, Annie. That's a cute little butt you got. <whistles> so, the, uh, ah, Cozy. Uzi, signore. I got a bunch of conser conservation hearts. Yes. Mother ever. Could I be? Oh, what?